Hey guys, Mr. B here, and in this video, we're going to be going through the practice problems in chapter 20, section 3 on electric circuits. All right, so let's here begin with number one. It says circuit diagrams use blank to represent parts of a circuit, including a source of electrical energy and devices that are run by the electrical energy. All right, so the circuit diagrams were mentioned in the notes, and they are basically drawings that use symbols to represent the different parts of a circuit, including, of course, the energy source and the things that are using that energy. All right, number two, three, and four, it says match each symbol to what it indicates on a circuit diagram. All right, so number two, um, we have this, this symbol here. So this is the symbol for a battery. So this is gonna be letter C. Oh, my bad. Sorry about that. It's gonna be letter C. Um, number three, we have this weird circle with like a half arc inside of it. That is the symbol for a light bulb. I always like that one because it reminds me of like half of a Pokeball because I'm a giant nerd. That's just what I think about. <laughs> and the last thing, number four, the little circle with a V inside of it, that is a voltmeter. So that will measure our voltage if we have one in our circuit measuring that. All right, number five, true or false, in a series circuit, if one element stops functioning, then none of the elements can operate. That is true, okay? So in a series circuit, if one part of it goes out, everything goes out. Um, very, very annoying, obviously, because, you know, if one little part goes out, you don't want the whole thing to go out, just that part can go out, and the rest of it should keep working. That's going to be more like a parallel circuit. All right, number six, it says, um, explain why the bulbs shine less brightly when more bulbs are added to a series circuit. Okay, so this was mentioned in the video, but when you add more objects onto a series circuit, you are increasing the resistance of the whole circuit because there's more things that the electrons have to flow through. When there's more resistance, that's going to decrease your current, and with less current, there means that there's less energy going through the circuit, so each object is going to get less energy and therefore shine less brightly. So to say all that, we're basically going to say by adding more bulbs to a series circuit, you are increasing the resistance, which then decreases the current. All right, number seven, true or false, circuits in a home are, I should say, I think, rarely wired in parallel. Um, that's false. Most circuits in a home are actually wired in parallel because if one part of your home loses power, we don't want the whole home to lose power. We just want that one part. So that's actually false. Most of your homes are wired parallel. Number eight, if one element stops functioning in a parallel circuit, the rest of the elements. So we actually answered this one just a few questions ago, but um, if one element in a, in a parallel circuit stops functioning, the rest of the elements keep working, okay? Um, it's not like a series circuit. Again, if one part goes out in a parallel circuit, there's other pathways for the electrons to travel through, in which case those objects just continue getting powered. It's just that one part that stops working. Number nine, the rate at which electrical energy is converted to another form of energy is called, so this is, um, this is electrical power, okay? So the rate at which work or energy is transferred so we will call this electrical power. Number nine, the SI unit of electric power is blank, which is abbreviated with a W. So this is the same unit of power that we dealt with in the previous quarter of general science, and that is the watt, okay? So the SI unit of electric power is the watt, which is abbreviated with a capital W. Number 11, true or false, electric power is calculated by multiplying current times voltage. Um, well, let's just go take a look. So electrical power, to determine our power, we have an equation right here. It is voltage times current, which I think in the question it even says that electric power is calculated by multiplying current times voltage. So yeah, that is true. So you can just go look that up. And uh, yeah, no problem right there. So yep, yeah, true. Okay. Number 12, circle the letter of what could happen if the current in a wire exceeds the circuit's safety limit. All right. So the thing to understand with current is if current gets high, there's, remember, there's always going to be resistance, okay? There's always going to be resistance in any material, whether it be a conductor or an insulator. The larger the current gets, the more energy is flowing through that object and the more resistance there will be because the object is going to get hotter, right? Because there's friction. So the faster things are traveling through there, 
the more friction there's going to be, which is going to raise the temperature, which essentially will increase the friction because as things get hotter, the resistance goes up, which then ultimately will make them go hotter because there's more friction, which then will make it go hotter because then there's more friction. And it will just keep building until eventually fire starts. Okay. So what could happen if a wire exceeds the circuit's safety limit? The wire could overheat. Yes, it's going to get hot. Okay. Which again is not good. The wire could get cooler. No, it's going to get hotter. A fire could start. Yes. When things get hot, things start to turn on fire or they start to melt. Letter D, a fuse could blow. Yes. So if we have fuses, this is where a fuse would come in, right? Where if it gets hot, it will melt. It will then fall off the circuit or the wires and then everything will turn off, which is good because then fire won't start. So, all right. Number 13, explain how a fuse prevents current overload in a circuit. All right, so we're just talking about this. So a fuse prevents current overload by melting when the current gets too high. So you can say a fuse prevents current overload by melting when the current gets too high. Last question, number 14, a switch that opens to prevent overloads when current in a circuit is too high is called a, so this is a circuit breaker, okay? The switch. When the current gets too high, it opens up, stops the current, in which case the current doesn't get too high, no fire start. So, all right, that is it for this section of notes and these problems. Hopefully that helped you. Again, as always, if you have any other questions, make sure you reach out. After this, all you got left is your test. So thanks for watching. I'm Mr. B. See you in the next one. Bye.